Welcome back to Quasi Bowl TV. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us again. Appreciate. Please share, subscribe, like. We want to thank all the new subscribers. We want to thank all the new uh, followers. We appreciate you guys. Thank you for our regulars who keep showing us love. Uh, also, we want to extend our appreciation to uh, Grace Can, Blue Chip, and of course, the man, um, Jamie Phillips at uh, Jamie Phillips Football Chat. We appreciate you guys giving us a chance to extend our platform. Guys, thank you again please don't forget share subscribe like we're going to discuss what happened over the weekend we're going to talk a little bit i think there's some rumors flying around with manchester united and liverpool there's a lot of things going on because this is the last week for transfers you know that this whole week is going to be busy and of course there's also some case of epl matches on tuesday wednesday and thursday so it's a very very busy week we've been saying this for a long time saying that somebody was going to get it and i was hoping it was going to be Manchester United, but sorry, Bombay. Somebody was going to get it, and it will happens to be you in Anfield with the owner showing up. And what a match! I mean, it's it's amazing. If I was looking at the list on all the people that had had the highest marks, right? Bobby Firmino, everybody say he's done, dead. We need to sell him. Henderson, everybody say done. But then when Henderson was playing, he was doing things that we will remember of the old Henderson. DVD got blasted for what the performance he had against uh, Manchester United. Guess what? He scores a goal. Uh, Trent has been getting it for since Champions League. Guess what? He assists and scores a goal. Bobby gave us three assists, a hat-trick of assists and two goals. And then of course, the youngest, the youngest that we we want them to succeed so bad. Elliot and Cavallo put the ball in the back of the net. Now, this match, blowing the whistle, LFC was on their neck. I mean, at one point, the, the commentator that I, that I was watching from was like, the center backs of Liverpool are in the half of um, Bournemouth, which is not which is nothing new. They were literally on the half, on the other side of the Bournemouth uh, side. Like, they were on the halfway line of the half, and they were on that line. So, we were suffocating them. Of course, they had a few breakthroughs I believe Allison make like two saves. This game is how we were expecting from them against uh, Crystal Palace, except that Crystal Palace, we did not finish our chances. And then, of course, what happened with Nunes? So, you know, it's been an up and down, like not even an up and down. It's been a very, very low for Liverpool, the team, uh, the manager, and of course, the fan. But this game, it was like everything came at perfection. It's not just the goals. I mean, the goals were coming. But it's the how we played. And this is the reason why, yes, some may say it'll be like, we've been telling you we need Milford. No, nobody said we didn't need more people. What we, some of us with sense, will say, this is why Klopp needs to realize that, hey, you need midfielders because the style you want to play requires that the midfielders are running 100 miles per hour till they drop. And they can do this 38 games or 38 weeks with the uh, international break and the World Cup and all this Champions League and everything. But the game itself, was exciting. If you are an LFC fan, you are watching it with delight. You are smiling. All these three weeks, we've been in the dump. No line. This game was just beautiful. It's not just the goals. Even if you take the six of the goals away, you'll be like, wow, this is an entertaining match. I could see my team actually playing well. And we saw that a little bit with the Crystal Palace one, but the goals did not come. And then, of course, uh, New Day's getting sent off. I was very, very happy for someone like Bobby. I mean, the man worked his socks off. Three assists and two goals. We were told he was done. We should sell him. Blah, 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 blah. And they also honorable mention, Diaz. Diaz actually not, you know, the, the thing that we've been talking about, say Diaz needs to come on his own. Don't be like Mane. Yes, he showed a little bit of Mane's style of play, but this was the Diaz that we got from Porto. This is the Diaz that when you go on YouTube, you see how the clips that he, the things that he do. He was everywhere. He was, and we can see that he and Robo are figuring things out and it's going to take some more time. And I think that he got more understanding with um, Simicas than with Robo because Simicas is a more offensive left back compared to Robo. Robo is just everywhere. I mean, Robo is just one of the, proud to me, the best left back in the world, depending on how his form is. It's just that he hasn't figured out, you know, he was with Mane for almost six years. So their understanding was just telepathic. Diaz is different, so they have to figure it out. And we're hoping that they figure themselves out quick. And I, I like the idea that Klopp put in Henderson on that left side because that also helped. Because then Henderson always know I need to cover. 
when Robo bumped forward. So it helped with that whole defensive structure on the side. Uh, so, I mean, there's nothing much to say. We don't need to gloat. We already did it over the weekend. We know how our team is. The thing is, we want them to perform like this or close to it every single game. It's impossible. We just don't want them to play. We just want them to enjoy themselves and just play it so that up and on. Every game, we do better. So hopefully, we have a Newcastle on Wednesday, and we don't need 9-0, but we need a W. One thing that I want to say is the back line did very well. Trent was amazing. He ran back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, his goal was just... And I'm seeing that Klopp don't want him to play midfield, but this right back here plays midfield. I mean, him and uh, he and uh, Robo were literally in the 18 box of the bomb is um, side so it seems like we are changing our style of play where he's not letting them go on the outside he's leaving that for Salah and um, Elliot or whoever's going to play that midfield three or the, the other second number eight to be doing the more of the outside work and then have Trent come through inside same thing Robo was doing because Robo was getting a lot of chances I am seeing that Liverpool is changing the style but we need those players to change the style we can't use the same players because these guys have been with each other almost eight years. When we play Manchester United, the only two players who played who were not part of that team that played, what, five years ago was Elliot and um, I believe Cavalli or Diaz. It's it's time for refreshment. I know Klopp is trying to do it slowly but surely, but like I said, at this time, Liverpool needs to start doing their plans earlier than just say we will wait. Because when we do it early, we are always a year or two ahead of most of the clubs. So it's time for us to start thinking ahead and say, oh, we didn't get him. So no, get somebody else who's as close as that person. Um, but anyway, we, you know, we move. I'm excited. We have game on Wednesday. Uh, we will talk a little bit about it. But let's talk about some of the games that came up over the weekend. Manchester United beating uh, Southampton in uh, 1-0. I mean, Manchester looks weird. I mean, that game is just Southampton did not take their chances. They could have hurt Manchester a lot if they had played a little bit better. Bradford and asked, uh, Everton had 1-1. One, one. I was expecting Bradford to win that game, but no, they, they are, their performance will always up and down, but they didn't lose, so that's a good thing. Brighton and Leeds was a great match, but um, Brighton came up with a win. Uh, what's the name? Grub, or whatever you say his uh, name. One day for Leeds, Chelsea, and um, Leicester. I think Leicester is dead. Either the players are tired of Brendan Rodgers, which it seems to be a thing of Brendan Rodgers. After a couple of years, either he run or that he leaves, or the players get tired of him. Because how are you gonna lose to Chelsea when they were down a man for almost what forty minutes or so? And you know, good job by the man Sterling scoring two goals, getting assists from Cucurella and um, James. You know, his fullbacks, which is something that he's known for. But Leicester, we need to look at Leicester. Because because they might get really get it with this the way they're playing right now. They haven't got any wins. I believe they have only one draw or so. Of course, Liverpool, Balmain for 9-0. City. I'm going to take a little minute to talk about City. I've said it on my last video that City is not as impressive as everybody thinks they are. City is struggling. They shipped that two goals. Should have been three. I don't know what VAR was thinking and reversed that third goal. Because if they allow that third goal to stand... That game is over. They might score one or two goals, but they are not winning that match. At best, they will probably draw 3-3. Three, three. This is the two goals they shipped today. I mean, yesterday. And I've been telling people, City are also struggling. Yes, they are a great team. That's why, and they have a heart of a champion. That's why they can always find a way to crawl back. Liverpool did that a lot last year, eventually caught up to us. So I'm saying people watch out the City. And, you know, Holland, the man is doing what Holland was brought here. I mean, hat-trick, he made it easy. And I think Crystal Palace made it way too easy for City. You saw what Newcastle did. They put in work. You can't sit back against City anymore, especially when they have Holland in the game. We, that, that whole that's why they brought Holland for teams that are trying to go low block on them. It's not going to work. That's why Crystal Palace came dead at them. The reason why uh, I said Crystal Palace, Newcastle came dead at them. The reason why Newcastle didn't win that match is because they got tight. The players that replaced um, the starting lineup did not came with the same energy and then took their foot off the gas and then City showed them what City is. If Crystal Palace had finished the game off and go at him, this game would have been over. And, you know, Haaland kicking somebody in the head. Mane did the same thing with Henderson and he got um, a red card. So this VAR, we need to look at this, man. There's a lot of questions. But like I told people, City is not as impressive as people think. They just grinding our wins as a champion will but eventually it's going to catch up Arsenal showing the mental toughness winning the game 2-1 coming from behind 
Um, great goal from Odegaard and uh, Gabriel, especially Gabriel, who you know made a mistake for Fulham or uh, Mitrovic climbing all over him like he did Trent. Now you guys see what we're talking about, but he you know he made it up. So shout out to Arsenal, Aston Villa, even G. I'm worried. I'm worried. Aston Villa lost zero one to West Ham. First win for West Ham. Um, Wolves and uh, Newcastle. This was a good game. Two great goals. I mean Neves with the cracker, and then of course Saint Maximus with his thing. I mean I telling my boy today i said if that guy can have 50 percent of his end product he will be probably the next money because he, he has the trickery he has the pace his end product man if somebody can sit him down and teach him before it gets too late otherwise he's just gonna be somebody who just knows how to dribble and run that guy he he, he has something he has something and of course spurs beat uh forest today i don't know what forest were thinking this is not fa cup forest you are not in the bottom league anymore you are in the big league you can't just be getting chances and thinking that oh, we are the darling and the Cinderella of the EPL. No, it doesn't work like that. You better ask Brentford or you'll be going right back down. You had so many chances and you couldn't take a shot. You should have won this game today. But of course, Spurs, the new Spurs, that is the Conte Spurs. They're showing mental toughness and, you know, Kane did what Kane does, even though he missed a penalty. You know, Henderson did very well. Great matches, very, very great matches this weekend. It was exciting. Uh, more games are coming in on um, Tuesday and Wednesday. I'll run them through. Crystal Palace, Brentford. Yeah, Crystal Palace, Brentford, Fulham, Bright, uh, Brighton. Uh, we have uh, Southampton and Chelsea. It might be an exciting match, but I think Chelsea will take it. Leeds and Everton. I expect Leeds to win this match. Arsenal and Aston Villa. This could be a payback from last year when Stevie G beat him. Uh, Bournemouth and Wolves. Bournemouth, you all need to wake up, man. You all need to wake up. City will have Forest. Oh my God. Anybody who has Haaland, captain it. West Ham and Spurs. This is going to be a cracker. I see Spurs might take this one this is a great match of course liverpool newcastle at anfield is going to be exciting we expect the same performance not the same score line but we won a w and of course on thursday we got Leicester City and Manchester United. Mind you, is beating them. Of course, mind you, this will be, if they do win, that's the third week in a row. They haven't done that in about 10 years. So whatever happens, good job for them. But anyway, guys, thank you so much. But before we leave, a club came out over the weekend, said, you know, I know it was tongue in cheek, but he said, you guys are right. I was wrong. We need another midfielder. Of course, everybody started looking at Frankie De Jong, which is like 1% chance. There's a chance that we never, from the numbers that they're talking about, is it's, 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 it's stupid we don't have time there's not enough time for never so i'm thinking casado will be the one for me i know everybody has theirs i think casado because we need energy in the midfield and that kid can bring it bringing energy does not require i mean require no club you can't just bring energy you have to know how to pass how to read the game and all that stuff so i think he's young he's somebody that club can mold and um that that will be the person that on my side i know a lot of people are choosing other players so whatever it is but manchester united from what we heard today they have agreed uh, uh, 102 or 105 million euros agreement with Ajax for Anthony. Um, they're doing the final paperwork probably by Monday or Tuesday. He should be in the, uh, in Manchester ready to roll. So Chelsea, uh, from rumors we heard about Chelsea also is Fafana. It's a deal, 90 million from what we heard or 85 million around that ballpark. Uh, so Fafana might go there. The Obama end deal has cool, so they might be looking at somebody else. They were also looking at Dion, but I don't think Dion. From what we heard today, De Jong is getting his wish and he's going to probably stay at uh, Barcelona. Guys, thank you so much. Again, thank you for joining us. We appreciate you guys. Thank you for signing up. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for keep supporting us. We appreciate you guys. New games are coming. Enjoy. Principal Archie. Peace. <laughs>